got Monday night prayer at 6 p.m. That's for everybody. That means you too, Facebook. That means you can come too. So everybody in here is invited to Monday night prayer and bring, and bring a friend or two or 12. Let's pack this place out on Monday nights. So then we got midweek service or Wednesday worship, as I like to call it. You get to come in here, praise and worship, sweat a whole lot and dance and scream and shout. And we have service for everybody on Wednesdays. That's from ages 2 all the way up to 102. You are all included. And if you're over 102, sorry. And then we got Thursday morning Bible studies at 10 a.m. That is a great, 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 great time. Oh, man, Iron Man. Basketball season needs to hurry up because I'm going to miss Iron Man again because of basketball season. It's all good. I get paid for basketball season. Brandon, if there's confetti in there still, we apologize. Hey, it is what it is. That means there was some celebration. Celebration is better than morning. Yeah. But Iron Man, February 11th at 9 a.m. Everybody that is a man is welcome. If you are not considered a man like under 18, that is, come with your dad or ask one of the men in the church to come with you or bring you and sponsor you, right? It is not bad for young men to be around grown men of God, right? Right. And then what we got next, Miss Cheryl? We got Mission Sunday coming up. That's coming up very, very soon, as in like next week Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. We got Murray and Kay Jackson coming. They're, they came, they're back from Uganda, and now they're gonna come here and preach. And then are they gonna go back to Uganda, or where are they going next, do we know? We don't know, okay. But we're gonna sponsor them wherever they're going so they can go and spread the gospel, right? And then we got Joan Hunter's Healing School sign up as soon as possible. As soon as possible. You want to be signed up so you can get all the books and the materials and go through that. There are 12 DVDs and seven books. So if you can do that in a week, more power to you, but that means you don't have a job. I'm just saying. And then we got Prophet Veal coming. Hey, who's that handsome guy next to Prophet Veal? Who's that? I don't recognize that guy. There's hair up there. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the March 24th, 25th, and 26th. It is going to be a fun, fun time. Whoever was here last time, Prophet Bill was here. You understand. Prophet Bill is going to bring the word, nothing but the word, and everything that is the word. And what we got next? Subscribe to our YouTube channel, please. If you're not sure about subscribing to the YouTube channel, ask Sister Holly and she will show you how to do so. And then we are raising money for our music ministry. In order to do things with excellence, we have to have equipment that is excellent. And right now, this one is on its last leg. Okay, so this, this keyboard's well over 20 years old, and this is a, a little computer in here, all right? So if you think about it, if you get a computer at home and it's 20 years old, that sucker's obsolete now. You're talking like first generation <laughs> Mac computer or something, you know? So this thing is like way overdue for an upgrade. The half the keys are sticky and stuff like that. I don't know if she spills her lipstick in there or what, but... But it's actually grape juice from communion one time. Right. At least it's anointed in them keys. But anyways, so just just think of that when you're you know want to try to help out as much as you can because this thing really needs to be upgraded for this, and it'll make it sound better too, and she'll play better too, of course. Okay. The pressure's on. I, I did talk to Pastor Kevin about this. Pastor Kevin, you know he don't pay retail for nothing. So what he's asking for is not retail because he found it on sale. Come on. So if you would have got retail, there would be like another twelve to fourteen hundred dollars up there. So thank Pastor Kevin that he don't pay retail for nothing. Yep. Well, thank God that he gives Pastor Kevin that ability to find those deals. Amen. Right? Right. Now one more announcement before we get into praise and worship, because I love praise and worship. 
and somebody's getting a sweaty hug after praise and worship, just so you know. Um, Brother Jake asked that you bring any food by this Wednesday, any food for the youth trip, bring it by this Wednesday. If you have already donated, please cross your name off the back. He appreciates that. If you're not sure if you're going to be able to make it with the food, let him know as soon as possible so he can go fill in all the gaps before they leave. Because we don't want them to go and expect to have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with no bread. Right? right? Yeah. That would be really difficult. Everybody would be licking their hands really hard. <laughs> They'd have to high five to make the sandwich. <laughs> I cracked myself up. I don't care if y'all have. Let's stand up. <laughs> Father God, thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to worship together. Lord, thank you for warming up the weather. I know from negative 20 to 20 is a 40 degree swing, Lord. So 40 degrees all the way up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
still got a reason to pray. Did you sleep in bed last night? Specify you. <laughs> oh, Pastor Kevin, will come up here and give me a spank. My mom's ain't here to check me, so somebody got to check me, right? <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> so, women, enjoy that. You know, she said the most important thing food. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was thinking about this. How come every time we do something, we got to eat? How about we eat spiritually instead of physically all the time, right? If we ate spiritually more than we ate physically, I guarantee you your physical body would be in such great shape. I just had, I got, I had a dream last night. I had this image of Jesus. And Jesus was like 
Come on, bring Mr. It. Universe. He was like buff like this, because you know he was a carpenter, but those are stonemasons back in the day. So I'm just thinking he ate spiritually all the time. He didn't always eat physically because he fasted for 40 days. Like a lot. So I was just thinking about it. I won't be going on the fast here soon. Um I'm gonna eat today. <laughs> I'm not gonna friend, I'm gonna eat today. But in the next week I'm gonna be going on the fast. So please, please pray for me because I don't need granola bars and cookies talking to me about it. Because that happened last time and the chocolate chip fell on the ground and was like, eat me. <laughs> but you, you, you think about it too. Think about how you eat spiritually if you need to fast, if you need to get in, into your word a little bit more, if you need to just find that way to seek God. Because we seek our remote controls and our car keys harder than we seek God sometimes. Say that again. It again. Ah. <laughs> no, we we do. If you lose your car keys and you got to get to work, you look under the couch, you look under the dog, you look in your sock drawer, you look underneath your refrigerator, you look in your gallon of milk, you look everywhere. <laughs> you look everywhere for that set of car keys, but how hard do you oh, yeah, for God? How hard do you search for his presence? That is a check that God's been putting in me. He was like, I was looking for the remote the other day. I am sorry, Pastor. Hurry up, man. You're taking up my preaching time. Let's go. It's Sunday, Pastor. It is Sunday. <laughs> On Wednesday, I'm fast. Okay. <laughs> but God just, he, he said, you, you search for your remote, and you, you spent a good 20 minutes looking up and down your house for the remote. And in that 20 minutes, you could have just been praying. So, that's why I'm, I'm going on this fast in the next week Amen. or so. Good, good, good. Because I need to search God as hard as I search for the things of this world sometimes. Sometimes we look for answers in the wrong places, and the wrong places never give us the right answers. So I'm going to the right place to get an answer. Amen. We also got to go to the right place to give. Right. There are many, many ministries out there that claim miracles and that God is going to help you if you donate. You will get a blessing in the mail if you send $5,000 to P.O. Box 77794, right? You get that all the time miracle on Facebook water. and all over the place. You can buy miracle, miracle water, miracle <laughs> oils. You can buy a miracle foot treatment. But how about you donate to somewhere that has fire and power because it was blessed by the Holy Ghost? And that place for today is the River Church. Amen. There's several ways here at the River Church you can do that. The first way is Cash App. That's cash.app slash money sign the River Church Inc. The second way is PayPal. That's paypal.me slash the River Church Inc. The third way is a mail in option. You can write a check or money order or super prayed over covered by the blood cash to the River Church Inc at 941 Huntington Avenue, private mailbox number 307, Wisconsin Rapid, Wisconsin, 54494. Otherwise, we got Wonder Twins. Oh, that was trying to the brownie man's over there again. <laughs> you can drop it in the bucket with them too, or we got the giving stations available in the back if you're just not sure about the final shirts. It's all good though. <laughs> Father, just, just bless those who seek your face. Bless those who seek you, not only in their time and their talents, but seek you and trust you with their seed, Father God. Let their seeds go and grow and multiply. Let their seeds grow into something that they not only can be proud of, but something that's going to reproduce and create a cycle of more sowing and more sowing and more sowing, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Just raise their antennas when it comes to giving. Let them be receptive to the numbers or whatever you impress upon their spirit to give, whether it is their time, talents, or money, Father God. Let them be receptive to that and move forward in that calling. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, little kids, y'all already know. Peace out. You got Miss Ann and Brother John. Uh-oh. And they got a lot of kids, so I know good and well they're gonna they're gonna check y'all if you need to be checked, but otherwise it's gonna be hard. Because Ann always has fun. <laughs> <laughs> Brother John, little kids smell fear. 
If you're baptized in that Holy Ghost language, you're, you are free to enter into that language right now. If you're not there yet, you just pray the best you can in English and worship Jesus. Father, we release your power. We release your anointing. I pray, God, that we're coming out of the prison of sickness. We're coming out of the prison of fear. We're coming out of the prison of disease. We're coming out of the prison of, of inconsistency. Father, you are taking us deeper and further and farther than we've ever been in our lives. And we believe we are in the season of abundant overflow. Miracles, signs, and wonders are about ready to erupt in our lives. I thank you, Lord, that you're setting our children free. I thank you, Lord, that you're setting our families free. I thank the Lord that you're doing oh yeah, I feel the anointing church yeah, I thank the Lord that you're doing a new thing you said in Isaiah behold I the Lord am doing a new thing and I declare and decree a new thing is beginning in our lives today a new thing is beginning in our homes today a new thing is beginning in our church today a new thing is beginning in our businesses today a new thing is beginning in our workplace today you're about ready to elevate us and we give you praise and we give you glory and we magnify your name in all the earth and everybody shouted and gave God a praise right now. Thank <laughs> you. 
breakthrough and breakthrough and breakthrough icebreaker and and collide man uh, uh last week uh, when I, I released that word on collide man i believe heaven invaded your earth i believe heaven invaded your circumstances i believe heaven invaded your businesses i believe heaven invaded your home heaven invaded your body some of you are getting ready to be radically converted in a different way i mean changed in the likeness of your god today can i get an amen Hallelujah. Thank you, band. Thank you, team. Didn't they do a great job? Come on, somebody put a praise on that, would you? Put a praise on it. Hallelujah. So as I, as I was getting things uh, uh, situated in my spirit for today, I, uh, I, I do want to say one thing. Thank you all for praying for me, those that I've asked to pray for me. I made it in to, I, I auditioned for a, a certain training and yesterday I got the news that I got accepted into the program. Come on, somebody. Because God's getting ready to take us to a national level. I want you to say that. Say, God's getting ready to take this ministry to a national level. Yeah, we're in a small city, but God's going to give us the region, then the state, then the nation. Can I get an amen? Because God is moving in an unprecedented way, in an unprecedented time. We are... We are seeing the manifestations of Almighty God pouring out on our lives. And uh, I, I, I've been watching many of you, and I'm so proud of the progress that each and every one of you are making today. And I, I thank God for our church. I thank God that we're a diverse church, that we don't just have a bunch of white folk in it. We got some pepper, too. Can I get in there? And God's going to start sending the nations to us. Amen. Miss Darlene is in North Carolina, North, uh, North, Carolina. North Carolina and with Joni, so they should be on their way home sometime later today. But I miss them greatly, and uh, uh, we got a couple people missing, but for the most part, we're looking pretty good today. So, amen, God is moving in it. But as I was getting, as I was getting ready, for, uh, I, I kept, I kept, I, told, I came upstairs, and I, w I was working on my message a little bit. I came upstairs, and I said to Sister Sharon, uh, our wonderful worship leader, by the way. Uh, I said to Sister Sharon, and if you wonder why I live there, it's because she's my wife. Amen. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, I'm blessed. Can I get an amen? So, uh, uh, I, I, I said, you know, Paul and Silas been going through my spirit. Paul and Silas. And, and I, I began to think about that and, and about their prison experience. Uh, uh, I've preached on this many times, but I've never preached it the way that I'm going to release it today because I want you to get to the place where every barrier in your life is broken. I want you to get to the place where every obstacle in your life is overcome. And there's some keys that we can learn just from Acts chapter 16. That, uh, that's where this whole story, I'm not going to read the whole story to you, but uh, I want us to break free. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, it is time for you to break free from every spiritual prison in your life. Say it again. It is time for you to break free from every spiritual prison in your life. What are spiritual prisons? Spiritual prisons are holding places for individuals who've been arrested in the supernatural realm. Now, uh, if, if you're a part of this church, you understand that we don't just operate in the natural, but we are supernatural beings with Christ. Amen. So people who are arrested in the spiritual realm, they often wonder what is taking place with their lives. And it, it seems as if they're doing hard time. I don't know if you ever been in jail or in trouble with the law, you know, and I'm not condemning you because I was there myself back in the day. But when you are incarcerated, come on, somebody, you, you, you feel like you're doing some hard time. Anybody ever been there or not? And we can relate that to uh, the natural, to uh, or, the, uh, or, or the natural circumstances that are going on in our life. Sometimes it feels like life is hard. If you can, if, if you can identify with that, shout amen. So people, 
uh, when a person's life has been caged up, it appears that many things are out of reach uh, at one time that this seemed attainable. When you get locked up and you were going after a dream and now all of a sudden you feel stuck like I preach an icebreaker, it feels like you can't get to where you know you can get to. But I got news for the devil today. That prison is not going to hold you back from this day forward. I've come with a prophetic unction on my spirit, in my spirit, to release to you today that God is getting ready to remove every barrier out of your life. Can I get an amen? So the breakthroughs, though, that sometimes they seem so close. How many has ever felt your breakthrough coming? If you felt it, shout amen. But, but it, it doesn't seem attainable. It doesn't seem like you can just get through that one area. But there's an account in our Bible of how prayer and praise. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, you better learn to pray and praise. There's, there's an account in your Bible how prayer and praise cause things to be shaken, prison doors to be open, and people to be set free. If there's one thing that God wants, boy, yeah, I'm, getting, oh, uh, I'm getting my happy on. Can I get it? If there's one thing that God wants, he wants people who are bound in prison set free. That's what one of the uh, uh, conditions of the anointing was. He said, the anointing of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord hath anointed me to preach, uh, to set at liberty those who are in captivity. I'm telling you, God wants to set you and I free from every spiritual prison that has ever been attached to your life. Uh, the bars that have been burying you. Uh, uh, being barriers to you are about ready to be broke open. Come on. Amen. Amen. Uh, but uh, I need you to understand, though, that prayer and praise, what are they? They're powerful spiritual weapons that create breakthroughs. Come on. Everybody say prayer, prayer. and praise, praise. are powerful, powerful spiritual, weapons spiritual weapons that create breakthroughs. That create breakthroughs. That's why the enemy attacks your prayer life and your praise life. Yeah, because he if he can get you to quit praying and quit praising, you ain't going to get your breakthrough. Now understand that we have all had days where it isn't easy to get your praise on. Uh, yeah. Has anybody ever been in a day when it wasn't easy to get your praise on? Yeah. Only a few of you, huh? You self-righteous little people. No, I, I'm telling you, there are days that it is hard to get a praise on. There are days that you struggle to get out of bed to get to your prayer closet. But that's just the enemy fighting you because he knows once you get into that place of prayer and, of prayer and praise that the breakthrough is on the way. Now, I don't know anyone. Does anybody in there always have a perfect day? Every day. Is there any perfect day? I mean, you wake up in the morning and, and you get your prayer and praise on, right? You, you're feeling good and all of a sudden a crisis shows up. Is anybody in the building? So I declare and decree to you that there is no perfect day. It just don't exist. Because why? Life is a mixture. Everybody say this. Say life is a mixture of pleasant days and painful days. Ups and downs. Happy and sad. Easy and hard. If you can relate to that, shout amen. So it would not surprise me today that if there's someone here today or watching me online who, who is saying in agreement, my Lord, because it's been one of those days already. I woke up this morning and I was feeling good and then me and my husband, we got in an argument on the way to church. Come on somebody, it's been one of those days already. Oh, Come on, or, or you got up this morning like I did, and, and I was telling uh, Jacob and Brandon, to, and, and Brandon prayed for me before I walked up, walked up here. I've been struggling since last night with my breathing, but I refuse to allow the enemy to defeat me. He's not going to steal my praise. Can I get an amen? So it, it would not surprise me. And the phrase, has anybody used the phrase, it's been one of those days? What does that indicate to you? That indicates to you that things didn't go well today. One of those days is when one bad thing happens after another. Are you with me? Yep. One of those days is when you want to run and hide from everything. And it, 
I guess all of you never had one of those days. Right? Yeah. One of those days is when you want to run away and hide from every, everything and everybody. And we've all had them. Nobody is exempt from one of those days. And if you never had one yet, I hate to tell you that you're overdue through, for a go-through. <laughs> You're overdue for a go-through. You're going to go through one of those days. When Paul and Silas, they had kind of one of them days. The Bible tells us that Paul and Silas were missionary partners on their missionary journey to Greece. And while in Philippi, initially things were going well. However, one day things took a terrible turn. There was a young woman, a fortune teller, you can read about in the book of Acts, who followed Paul and Silas. And they went from place to place ministering the gospel. She was telling everyone, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. But I got news flash for you. This hit me when I was studying. Not everyone who talks good about you is really for you. Can, can I get a better amen? Can I get a hallelujah? How many's learned that lesson? If you have, put a praise on it right now. So not everybody that's talking good about you is really for you. The Bible says she did this for many days and it seemed to be a good thing at first. But to Paul and Silas, it became a nuisance. It became a distraction. How many ready to get rid of distractions in your life so you can fulfill your destiny? So this young girl, what did she do? She got on Paul's nerves. Anybody ever have somebody get on your nerves? I might be getting on your nerves right now. Come on. <laughs> I'm hitting your last nerve. <laughs> Anybody ever say, man, they hit my last? Yeah. Nobody, huh? You all perfect little angels. <laughs> but, but when when I look at you, I see your I see your horns too. Come on. I see that halo hanging crookedly on your horns. Uh, Anyway, so, so anyone, anyone here ever got anybody get on your nerves? If that's true, shout amen. amen. So the Bible tells us that Paul had enough. I'm here to tell you it's time to tell, tell the devil enough. enough. He, he, so he had enough. And what did he do? The Bible tells you, if you read the whole story, that he cast the spirit out of that girl and she was instantaneously delivered. Is anybody looking for the suddenlies again? Is anybody looking for the instantaneous miracle working power again? But, but watch this. When she lost her power... She also cost the men that owned her money. The young woman was being used by influential men in the community. She was kind of being pimped for, in a way for her gift, okay? Because she was a fortune teller. So her masters got so mad, what did they do? They grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace. And things went from bad to worse. Has anybody have a, ever had a time where things went from bad to just worse? Your car wasn't running, now it's in a T-bone accident. Can I get an amen? So Paul and Silas uh, came before what was considered in the Bible a makeshift court. They were stripped, they were beaten severely, they were thrown into the inner prison, and their feet were fastened to stocks and bonds. Why don't we have a real conversation about a bad day? I mean, that's a real bad day. Some of our bad days don't even compare to their bad day. Can I get an amen? So, uh, uh, so have you ever had a day when things go from bad to worse? If you have, shot, shot, yes. Okay, yeah. what do you do? What do you do in those days? Well, I'm glad you asked because Paul and Silas provide the answer. It's, it's in Acts 16, 25. Everybody read it with me. Around what? Midnight. Midnight. What did, who? What did they do? They were praying and what? To who? And when the other and the other prisoners were what? Listening. Stop right there. Do you know that theologians will tell you that Paul's jaw was probably broken because of the rod that came across his face? So what's your excuse for not praising? Uh oh. Well, I don't feel like it today. Hey, I bet he didn't feel like it either, but he knew his breakthrough was in it. Right. <laughs> Verse 16. Watch this now. What happened? What's the next word? Suddenly. Anybody ready for a suddenly to happen? Yeah. So prayer and praise create suddenly. 
Okay, there was a massive what? Earthquake, and the prison was what? Sh How many want your prison to be shaken down to the foundation? Amen. And all the doors what? Oh, another suddenly happened. Well, all of a sudden there was an earthquake. All of a sudden the prison door or the prison was shaken. And then all of a sudden every prison door opened. Everything that's been holding you back is bad, is holding you back because the enemy is holding back your prayer and your praise. Right. If you can get your prayer and praise on, I'm telling you, I've seen it work too many times in my life. It's worked too many times in Sharon's life. It's worked too many times in some of your lives. And the enemy don't want you to pray and praise. But if you can get there, if you can push, if you can pray until something happens, can I get an amen? Something's going to happen. Right. And then the chains, not only did the doors open, what else happened? The chains. The chains. Come on, read it with me. And the what? The chains. What did they do? Fell they fell off. So here's a simple equation. Prayer plus praise equals breakthrough power. Can I get an amen? amen? So when God's power is flowing, you are breaking through. And I need to tell you that sometimes bad days are bad days because we simply didn't take it to the Lord in prayer. Come on. Right. I don't want to pray. I don't feel like praying. Right. Come on, somebody. I'm having a bad day. I'm not praying today. That's our mistake. Okay. There was a man. I'm gonna, I want to give this to you because I looked it up for you. Uh, he was a Canadian poet. His name was Joseph Skirvin. That's him. Skirvin became aware of the power of prayer and its ability to strengthen him through trial. Everybody say prayer, prayer. and its power prayer. will strengthen me prayer. through the trials of life. Prayer. It sustained him in a time when everything seemed lost. How many has ever gone through a time of loss? Shout amen. amen. So uh, uh, the story behind it is this. In 1843, Joseph's fiance drowned the night before their wedding. Oh. He was supposed to get married the next day, and his, his, his fiance drowned. This is a true story. Soon after, his mother became gravely ill. He wrote a, his mother a letter and enclosed the lines of a new poem out of this procedure uh, he had written. And we all know the words of this poem as the hymn, What a Friend We Have. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come Out on. of this pain came a poem that changed the world. Right. And I'm here to tell you your pain, if you use it properly, can become a platform right. to change your world. And to change, come on, and to change on, those around you. Can I get an amen? So in the first verse of Joseph's uh, 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 poem, Oh, what peace we often forfeit oh what needless pain we bear all because we do not carry everything to god in prayer see prayer is our open line to god's presence say that we say prayer is an open line to god's presence so how can you break through a rough patch that's a question i get a lot how do i break through this time how do i get through and i'm going to tell you start praying See, because when you've been in a rough season, prayer will sustain you. But I challenge you not just to pray, but I challenge you to pray then praise your way out. Because prayer plus praise equals breakthrough power. You will break through with God's power. Watch me now. Once we prayed and put our problems in God's hands, what else is there to do but praise him? Because if we believe that he answers our prayer, we got a reason. I got a reason to pray. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Come on. Anybody got a reason to praise? Come on, put a praise on it right now. You See, to do anything less after we pray, to do anything less than praise, is, is to say that God don't hear or God don't care. All right. But I'm getting my help coming. Right. See, if you believe he hears and you know he cares, then you got a reason to praise. 
See, your prayer and your praises take a bad day and make it a good day. Anytime you're breaking through, it's a good day. If you believe amen. that, shout amen. amen. So the record says that Paul and Silas, as they sang, the prison was shaken, the bars were open, and everyone was delivered. Now this morning, I want to give you three areas of thought that was going through my spirit as I was getting this ready last night, and I cleaned it up early this morning. So the three areas I want you to ponder on is, 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 is these three areas that will turn prison doors into powerful breakthrough. How many want to take your prison doors and open them and go to your powerful breakthrough? Amen. Number one, the first thing that we, because I believe we got to remain uh, 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 realistic. Yep. Okay. How many believe in being realists? I mean, yes, we can change things, but number one thing is there is pain in a prison experience. Yeah, there is. Can I get a better amen? amen? There is pain in the prison experience. Remember, these men were serving the Lord when they found themselves in this mess. They were doing what God called them to do. They were preaching the gospel. They were healing the sick. They were delivering people who were bound by demons. Come on, somebody. They set that young girl free from her fortune-telling spirit. They were doing what God called them to do. And some religious folks will label you, and when you're going through a trial, and they'll say, you must be sinning, and you must be, hey, maybe we're doing what God told us to do. Right. Can I get an amen? Good. So remember, they were serving the Lord when they found themselves in the mess. And I think it's always sometimes a shock to church folk and to our spiritual system when saints suffer. Right. Yeah. But suffering is part of the gospel. Jesus never said you wouldn't suffer. He said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of every one of them. And, and, and Paul and Silas... You got to remember, they were beaten, probably with a cat of nine tails and a rod. And when the prison experiences of life come, they tend to beat us down and leave us in torment. How many has ever been in a bad, dark situation and you felt tormented? Well, the Bible says fear has torment. But here's the good news. God has not given you and I the spirit of fear, but of what power and of what love and of what sound. How many are glad you got the victory? Shout amen. Now, if you haven't been there yet in torment or a bad day, get ready. Some day's coming. Why? The answer is why not? Why not? Listen, guys, as we pass through this life, we can expect Something shook by. I think God's getting ready to shake the ground. <laughs> Almost got me off track here. Hallelujah. But, but, but uh, if you haven't been there, get ready because we can expect our share of difficulty and trouble in this life. Sometimes we forget that God uses the trials of life to develop us, to cause our faith to rise to a whole nother level. In the King James Bible, if you read that story, it says that Paul and Silas were cast, everybody say C-A-S-T, cast into the inner prison, okay? The word cast there, and I should have put it up on the screen for you, but the word cast there means this, to throw something without regard, or where or how it lands. See, the trials of life come, and they come with no regard, they don't care how you get there. They don't care how you land the attacks of the enemy. He don't care about you. He just wants you to fail in the midst of your prison experience. He don't care that you've landed on a soft spot. He hopes you hit the concrete hard. Can I get an amen? So they were just tossed into the prison without any care for their well-being. And the jailer then cast them into not only the prison, but it says the inner prison. Everybody say inner prison. That's like solitary confinement. That, that, that's like a dungeon where it's dank and dark and dirty and discouraging. Has anybody ever been in a dark place, in a discouraging place, after the enemy hits you hard? Uh, 
I remember when the enemy hit Sharon and I back in 2003 with the ministry. We were hit hard. We were in a dark place. We were in a dungeon. We were in a, a place that, that not a lot of preachers would have got back up and continued to fight. But we had to learn to put our praise and our prayer, prayers together so we could see a breakthrough. So we could keep fighting for the vision that God said we would have in this area. And I'm telling you, God is getting ready to open up the windows of heaven. The icebreaker is on the way. And things, heaven and earth, are about to really collide with us. I mean, heaven's about ready to collide to earth. So they were tossed into the prison. The jailer cast them into the inner prison. And sometimes life does that, doesn't it? Puts us into a dark place. Yeah. Nobody's ever been in a dark place. Yeah. Thank you for your underwhelming response. <laughs> there are times in life when we end up in some prison. And when we're in that prison, life can be painful. Amen. We can feel like we're all alone. When you get a diagnosis of stage four cancer in your body, you feel all alone. When you're constantly in pain uh, every day of your life, you feel all alone. When, when you're going through emotional matters, you, you feel like nobody can understand you. And, and, and even your wife or your husband, they can't reach you and you kind of feel all alone. Has anybody ever been there? But there are many, I, 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 I kind of said, Lord, what types of spiritual prisons are there? And he gave me, I know there's, a, there's probably a hundred of them, but I got seven. Number one, there is the prison of poverty. The enemy wants you to live in poverty. But God says he wants you to live in prosperity. There is the prison of uh, diseases. Huh? When you get a diagnosis that you are going to die, I'm here to tell you that I believe God's going to raise up a generation of men and women that are going to kick cancer to the curb, AIDS out of their bodies. Come on. Somebody, autoimmune system disorders are got to go. Can I get an amen? I believe pancreases are going to be healed. I be I, I, hearts are going to be made whole. Come on, somebody. Does anybody believe in the God of healing anymore? His name, one of his names is Jehovah Jireh, my provider, and his other name is Jehovah Rophah, the God that heals me. He's healed me too many times to tell you he don't. I would, uh, maybe Sharon should have said, don't tell me he won't do it. Amen. There's the prison of debt. How many has ever been in that prison of debt? Where you're struggling from paycheck to paycheck and, 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 and sometimes you can't pay. I remember uh, 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 way back when the when our church was struggling way back and me and Erlene sitting here on the front row, we would call the creditors and say, can you take a quarter payment? Can you take a half payment? There wasn't just enough. There wasn't enough money to do to even pay the bills. But I'm here to tell you right now, this church right now is thriving. This church is not just just surviving. God is supplying every need according to the riches and glory in Jesus Christ. I had a person put a big chunk, told me they're going to put a big chunk of money on that keyboard and I pray we go overflow on it so we can get everything that we need to do what God wants us to do. Can I get an amen and a hallelujah? How about the prison of struggle? Right. Has anybody ever been in struggles? They can wear you out but God gives you when you put praise on it and prayer in it God gives you the strength to overcome your struggles how about the prison of unforgiveness has anybody ever dealt with that I have I'm, but I'm overcoming come on amen we're all a work in progress. Can I get an amen? Unforgiveness will cause you to be bitter. Unforgiveness will cause you to lose your vision. Unforgiveness will cause you to walk away from your purpose. Unforgiveness will steal your identity. Come on, it will corrupt you. And it will cause bitterness to take root in you. Hebrews says, in the book of Hebrews tells us that we've got to be careful to get rid of the root of bitterness in our lives. Because bitterness will destroy everything around you and everyone around you. Can I get an amen? Yep. How about the prisoner of, a prison of jealousy? Yep. Yep. You know, the, 
You know, all these people are getting blessed and look at me and uh, when's God going to do it for me? I'm going to tell you when he's going to do it for you. When you put a real praise on it. Amen. <laughs> How about the prison of fear? Fear will lock you up. Fear will hold you back. Fear will paralyze you from taking a risk. But I'm telling you, if you can take a risk in faith, there will be a great reward on the other side. Amen. And it's during those times, it may seem when we're in these prisons, that God doesn't care about what we're facing. Right. It may seem like you've been tossed. He tossed uh, you were tossed aside without any regard for your well-being. But I assure you this morning, that is the furthest thing from the truth. And that is not the case. If you are God's, how many are, how many believe you belong to God? Amen. Only, oh, is that all? I said, how many believe you belong to God? Amen. Wait a minute now. I'm, uh, I'm going to have an altar call right now. I said, how many believe you belong to God? Amen. And if you belong to God, he's caring for you and he's working everything out for your good and his glory. Can I get an amen on that? Because Romans 8.28 is a reality. All things work together for the good. That means good things, bad things, ugly things, hard things, easy things. Everything is working out for your good. The Bible tells us if we give up in the day of adversity, our strength is small. But I'm here, I'm raise, I want to raise up some folk. I want to raise up a church. I want to raise up a group of men and women that will push through the press and say, you know what? I'm not going out empty. Uh, right. Come on. Right. Can I get an amen? amen. Woo! Can you, can you see I'm excited? No. Uh, there ain't many to walk on right now. <laughs> Every Monday prayer meeting, I mean, not every Monday, but some Mondays we walk around to every seat and we command it to fill up. Can I get an amen? So I assure you that's not the case because if you're God's, he's working out his perfect plan for your life. But you got to know that it was Satan's design to use that prison to abort your destiny and your dream. To grasp this story now, let me go back to it. If it were not enough to beat these men, throw them into the prison, cast them into the dungeon, then the jailer placed feet, uh, uh, placed uh, stocks on their feet. This, this is what happened when they were in that situation. It prevented any movement on their part. They were stuck. Right. Yeah. Can you get the picture? Yeah. There's stocks on their feet. Stocks in there, um, the, probably that bar came up, you know, the old stocks. Yeah. They're down in solitary confinement. And they begin, the Bible says, that they begin to sing and pray so loud that the whole prison began to hear them. So they didn't allow their circumstance to steal their praise. They didn't allow that hardship to steal their prayer life. They knew that God would answer. And I've come to tell somebody here today that is going through a struggle or a mess, your God will answer you. You know, Brother James, our young man friend here, James, he was in a bind. But I believe he's coming out stronger. I believe he's coming out better. Come on, he, he's showing you the ankle bracelet, but he's here in the house of God today. Come on, somebody. God's working in his life, and God's going to turn some stuff around. Amen? See, the enemy wants to use those prison experiences in our lives to serve the purpose of shutting us down. Are you following me? But God's purpose in it, in the prison, is to use us more greatly for his glory. Because if you've never been through something, you can't tell me how to get out of it. I don't want to hear your advice if you've never had struggle. I don't want to hear your advice if you've never been drug addicted. I don't want, come on, I, I, I'm being real today. You want a realist? You don't tell me about your marriage that's all goofed up and mine's strong and you're going to tell me how to fix mine. Yours is all messed up. Look at yourself. Why don't you do an introspection on yourself? 
Why don't you keep your nose in your own business and maybe things would go a whole lot better for you. Can I get an amen? amen. So, so the devil, but here's the problem. The devil and the flesh seize the prison experiences of life to force us into spiritual inactivity. Right. Yeah. He yes, wants to do. shut us down. And he will, you know, his biggest trick, isolation. Don't, you don't have to go to church. You don't have to be around people. Come on. I don't need to go to church today. I'm fine. Yeah, you're going to be fine until the, the prowler shows up. You, you, you see, the, anybody ever study lions? The Bible says Satan is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may what devour. He, he wants you on his menu. So he waits for you to start straggling. And when you start straggling away from the herd, that's when the lion pounces. But I'm here to tell you, we got to do what Hebrews chapter 10 says. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, even more so. And I don't know about you, but I'm seeing the day approaching. Uh, right. Amen. Amen. Um, but the devil uses that to get us inactive. And I submit that someone here today or listening to me online has felt incarcerated, locked up, stuck, immobile. But I came today. I stopped by to tell you the better is getting ready to happen in your life. The breakthrough anointing is coming on you right now. There's a spirit of breakthrough in the atmosphere. And if you receive that spirit, lift your hands and say, I receive it in the name of Jesus. So we talked about the pain of the prison experience, but let me tell you the second thing that I learned from the story. You need to amp up your praise in the prison. Not shut down. The second thing that came to me was amp up your praise in the prison. We may wonder why. How could anyone praise the Lord under those circumstances? You know, I... You know, look at Jacob Anderson. You know, he, he's had six brain operations and he keeps praising. He keeps worshiping. Come on. He keeps preaching. I can't get nobody help. Yes, I can. Is anybody going to help me shout amen for that? I look at Holly and she's going through her situations and she's got energy and zest and zeal and it don't allow her and she is not allowing that to steal her praise. Amen. It's clear that your attitude determines your altitude. The higher you want to go, the more positive you got to become. Can I get an amen? So instead of pouting in the prison, these men prayed and praised in the prison. We got to stop pouting, walking around like we're defeated. And I'm telling you what your Bible says, your God always causes you to triumph. Amen. So when was the last time you and I were in a bad situation? And instead of asking God, why is this happening? We just begin to pray and praise. When was the last time? Just a challenge. I always check myself too. The other day I was walking through Walmart just a few days ago with Sharon and, and you know, I've been dealing with this foot, you know, and, and I, I said, my foot, and I said, feels great in the name of Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Like Joan Hunter taught us, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on. Let's get real here. Yep. Amen. So instead of pouting, why don't you put a praise on it? Instead of griping and grumbling, why don't you put a shout on it? Can I get an amen? I think it's a valuable lesson because when we're shut, when we're shut up in one in a prison of experiences, we're on lockdown. We're on lockdown. And while we're on lockdown, we need to learn to call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Are you, uh, I'm not boring you, am I? Because I got a little bit more to go. Can I get a name? Because Brandon took up all my preaching. I know he hasn't done it for a few weeks, but man, I got to get him back on. No, I'm just kidding. He does a great job. Amen. We like to tease each other. But I think it's a valuable lesson. I, I wish we would all learn the lesson that prayer and praise. Say this way. Say prayer and praise should be our first resort, not our last. 
What's the first thing we want to do when bad things? Complain. Complain and gripe and grumble. And, oh, it's all pastor's fault. We did what he told us to do. <laughs> if we could learn to resort to prayer and praise, we would never retreat to worry. Say it again. Huh? Say it again. You told Brandon that. It, say it again. Say it again. Again. <laughs> anyway. Say it again. If, if, we would, would, if we would make prayer and praise our first resort, we would never retreat to worry. Instead, we'd be breaking through. So I need you to catch this. Yes, when you're worrying, you're retreating. Amen, Sister Ellen. But I need you to catch this because I was studying this, and, and as I was studying, this revelation hit me real hard. Paul and Silas, you know what happened to them when they began to pray and praise? Their whereabouts, they forgot about their whereabouts as they started to worship. When you start worshiping God in the midst of your trials and troubles and problems, hallelujah, you forget all about him because now your focus is on Jesus. Your focus is on, come on, am I telling the truth? I said, am I telling the truth? But when you are in your problems and circumstances and you're not focusing it on Jesus, it looks like you're never going to recover. But I serve the God of recovery. I serve the God of restoration. I serve the God that can take a bad situation and turn around and make it good. If that's you, if you believe that, shout amen and give God a praise. Come on, give him a real praise. Give him a shout of praise. Right now. Learn to praise him in the problem wrapping up but just a recap we we looked at the pain of the prison the praise in the prison but this morning i also want you to notice that praise in the prison produces results oh. right right if you know the whole story if you didn't go read it okay you shouldn't have to come to church to hear all the word you you you, you this should just be on the, the uh, this should be the icing on the cake uh, can i get an amen <laughs> You should be studying the word all week long. Can I, can I get an amen? Right. So they, 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 the praise in the prison can produce results. Their time, I want you to, I want you to say that we say my time, my time in the prison experience prison. was not a waste of time. <laughs> See, Paul and Silas were in the prison, but they refused to waste their time. They refuse to waste their time blaming God. They, uh, they refuse their time uh, uh, to waste their time complaining and griping and grumbling and saying, oh, well, I was doing what you told me to do, God, and look where I'm at right now. No, no, they didn't do that. The Bible says they begin at midnight, they begin to sing and they begin to praise. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you at your midnight hour is the best time to amp up a Praising you to pray like you never prayed before, to see God move in your life like you've never seen Him move before. Amen. Woo. Are you with me? So their praise was bringing them breakthrough. And the Lord used that situation for His glory and their good. So these two men, remember, they were beaten to a bloody pulp. You've got to get a picture in your head, man. It wasn't just like they were kicked a few times. They were whipped with a cat of nine tails. Had a rod coming across his cheekbone that probably either broke it or dislocated it. And he still found a way to praise God. So they were locked also in the nastiest place imaginable in the prison. Their feet were locked in stocks. And they were still able to lift up a prayer and a praise. So when the doctor tells you you're going to die from a sickness, get your praise and prayer life going. Start quoting every scripture that you can find on healing. Can I get an amen? Start finding every promise in the book. There's over 30,000 of them in your B-I-B-L-E. And every one of them is for your benefit. 
Can I get an amen? You got to get them promises activated. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. So don't tell me how bad it is if you ain't praying and praising. Because your prayers and your praise will cause your attitude to change. And you will know that your God will supply all your needs. He'll heal your body. He'll save your children. He'll deliver you from the power of the darkness. He'll set you free. He'll touch your finances. He'll make ways for you in the desert. If he can make water come out of a rock, man, what can he do for you today? If he can split a Red Sea so you can walk on dry ground, there is nothing impossible for God. If, a, if, a, if his son can come and die, and three days later, he came up out of that grave with resurrection power. Ah, there's nothing that your God whoo, can't resurrect in your life. Amen. Am I preaching okay today? Am I inspiring you to believe for more? I hope to God I am. Amen. I got to remind you. And I hate to do this, but I got to remind you. The world is watching you as you go through the prison experience. Yeah, you're right. right. You're right. Yeah. Fact. Yeah. As they watch you, they could care less when everything's going good for you. Right. right. How many has ever been there? Yeah. They ain't celebrating your breakthroughs. They, yeah. they tolerate you. So sometimes, mostly comes from our own family. I can't get nobody. <laughs> they tolerate you. They see that they see good things happening to you, and they're like, hmm. "But they ain't doing what you do. They're not tithing. They're not sowing. They're not helping people." They're not praising. They're not reading their Bible. And they see the hand of God on your life. And they're kind of irritated that you're successful. They're, they're kind of irritated that you're blessed. They're kind of, come on. They may not say it to your face, but I guarantee you they're talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. But just let tragedy come on your life. And they're all eyes and ears. Yeah, it's true. Oh, I heard Pastor Kevin, he, he, he's going through a rough time right now. And you know what they're doing? <laughs> I wish he'd leave this city. It ain't happening on, on my watch. Can I get an amen? They tried to kick me out, but the Lord told me, if man put you there, man can take you out. But if I put you there, you'll never be taken out. Can I get an amen? Just wait till tragedy comes in your life and all the focus is on you now. Why? They want to see if you what you have is real in the valley as real as it was on the mountain. Come on. They want to see if what you say is real. So watch your example when you're going through trial. Try to keep a good attitude. Try to keep your praise level up. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Listen, there's no better testimony to the grace of God than a saint who can shout when the pressure is on. Can I get an amen? See, if they see you crumbling and crying and poor me and woe is me and nobody understands and I'm going through this all by myself, you ain't inspiring no faith. They're looking at you and saying, your God ain't real. But if you can find a way to praise, hey. if you can find a way to pray, if you can find a way to elevate your spirit, they will take notice and they will say, look what the... And when you come out of the side, out of the side like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, they will look down and like King Nebuchadnezzar did and say look what the Lord has done Amen. Amen So Satan meant the jail to be a terrible barrier but God turned it into a terrific breakthrough Right. Woo, how many are ready for breakthrough? Amen. Is it hot here or is it just me? <laughs> Fire or sweat it's one of them so, so when God shook the jail, I'm almost done. Hang on with me just a little bit longer. When God shook the jail, the Bible says 
that all the prison doors blew open and everyone's bands were loosed. Right. Now the story would have a great ending if it stopped right there, wouldn't it? <laughs> but there was a breakthrough coming to those who weren't even in the prison. Right. You're right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out. My praise can help somebody else get their breakthrough too. Oh, it's quiet now. My prayer life can help somebody else get their healing. My prayers can help somebody else get see that financial blessing come. My prayers can cause a, a child that is wayward in your life to come home. Woo! The Bible says that the jailer and his family heard the gospel and they believed the gospel. And Paul, uh, Paul said to him, you and your whole house shall be saved. See, when others see you going through the struggle and you come out on victory side, they're going to say, what must I do to be saved? Can I get a better amen and a hallelujah in the house? See, they heard the gospel and they believed. Hallelujah. Because they believed, Sister Marcia, they got their breakthrough. Yep. You never know what the prison experience of life are doing to those around you. Right. Your prison experiences are impacting those around you. So as the world watches us and watches you walk in victory, despite your problems, I didn't say you wouldn't have no problems, uh -huh. but as they watch you walk in victory over your problems, their faith is going to be stirred. Right. Satan had tried to put an end to Paul and Silas's ministry, but you know what? He, he, uh, uh, he tried also to cause them to be weary in their cause and doubtful of their Christ. But they knew what to do and they knew how to look at it and God turned it around. I wonder this morning, what will you do at the midnight hour? Well, because you're going to have a midnight hour. You're going to have a time in your life where things just don't make sense. You're going to have a time in your life where there's a real struggle going on in your life. Right? Well, midnight is a milestone. The night is half over. And you're getting ready to break through the dawn. Amen. And with each minute, we get closer and closer to daylight. I'm telling you, the glory of the Lord is coming on you to d dispel all the darkness around you and cause victory and blessings to come in your life. Can you give God a praise on that? The question we face is this. Can we make it till daybreak? Can we endure? Do we have the strength to go through the struggle? The answer depends on what you do at midnight. Wow. What decision do you make? And did you prepare while it was yet day? Wow. Uh-oh. See, Paul and Silas, if you really study them, they didn't just pray and praise it in the prison. Right. They were praying and praising when everything was going good. They were having revival services. Come on. The demon-possessed girl, the fortune teller girl, got delivered and set free. Don't tell me there wasn't a praise break right there. They continued doing at midnight what they'd always been doing in the daylight, praying and praising. <laughs> So don't let your midnight steal your praise and your prayer life. While in lockdown, don't let the prison lock up your lips. Can I get a better amen? Why don't you tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, while you're in lockdown, don't let the, the prison experience lock up your lips. Why? Because death and life are where? The power of the tongue. Mind. The devil wants to shut your mouth. That's why COVID showed up, you know. Yep. He wanted to mask your mouth so you would stop talking. Uh oh, it's quiet now. He wanted to cover up our voice. He wanted to try to destroy our creative power through the words that we speak. But I say to you today, you're blessed. 
I say today, to, today, you are highly favored. I say today that you are healed of all your sicknesses and diseases. I say today to you today that financial blessings are getting ready to flow in your life like you have never even dreamed. I declare and decree to you today that the plot of the enemy is coming to an end and you are rising up in resurrection power. I declare and I declare, come on somebody, anybody in agreement with me. I declare and decree to you that your bondages are being broken off your life forever. I say unto you, fear no longer has a hold on you. You're going to start walking by faith and not by sight. I wish I'd have a church get happy about it. Oh, if you continue to pray and praise in the prison, you can come to that place of breaking through. Does anybody want to come to a better place of breaking through? I dare you to stand to your feet and lift up your praise right now. I dare you to lift up your voice. I dare you to clap your hands. I dare you to shout to God with the voice of triumph. The Bible says shout to God with the voice of triumph. It doesn't say you've been defeated. It says you've got the victory written all over your life. I'm here to tell you your God is greater. Your God is stronger. Your God is more mighty. He can defeat everything your life. He can remove every disease out of your body. He can cause finances to flow. But you've got to get to that place where you put your prayer and praise on it. Come out of that depression. Come out of that oppression. Come out of that poor me mentality and say, God, I'm trusting you to bring me out. Anybody trusting God to bring you out this morning? I said, anybody trusting God to bring you out this morning? God's getting ready to do some phenomenal things, Jenna. Yeah, Jenna, for you too. I've been praying for you. You're going to get your healing. You're going to get your breakthrough. See, my prayers are going to help set you free. My praise is going to help get you delivered. Hey! It's time. It's time to move forward. It's time to get rid of fear. It's time to overcome failure. And just because you fail don't mean you're flawed. Or, I mean, just because you're flawed don't mean you're fake and a failure. You still have God's hand on your life. You're still living and breathing, right? My Bible says in the book of Psalms, let everything that hath breath, what? Praise. Somebody put another praise on there, right? Come on, you've got a praise break. As you're praising, I'm seeing limitations removed. As you're, come on, as you're praying, praising and praying, prison doors are opening. The shackles are coming off of you. And you get ready to do a new thing. And you get ready to move with God into a new arena where you've never been before. Rachel and John, get ready for increase. Yes, get, I see increase all over you. I see God moving mountains out of your way. I see God getting ready to do some miracles in your lives, in your relationship, in your children. Oh, the devil said it's over, but God said, no, 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 no. It just begun. The miracle working power of God is coming on you too, and the power of God is going to break you through to the other side. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. You still got a reason to praise. Do I, can I get my band up here? Can, do you still got a reason to praise? I said, do you still got a reason to praise? Shake your neighbor and say, do you really got a reason to praise? And you better sing this song with Sharon. Tell him, you better sing like you lost your natural mind. You better lift your voice like a trumpet. You better say, devil, you defeated. Come on, somebody, put a praise on it. Put a shout on it. Put a declaration on it. Hey, I come here to stir you up. I come here to you. Praise. 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 Come on, lift it up.
declare and decree that the people under the sound of my voice and watching me online, they're getting a new spirit of praise. The, 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 uh, the wave of intercession is coming over their life. A, a new prayer level in their life. A new praise level. Because when they pray and praise, you're going to bring them to breakthrough. We give you glory that every situation is under your control. And we magnify your name in all the earth. Father, take us home safely from this place. And let your power and your anointing go with us. Let it flow with us into the restaurants. Let it flow with us into our homes. Let it flow with us into Walmart if that's where we're going next. Or our relatives' homes. We pray, God, that when we walk in, the atmosphere begins to change. Because we are people of praise. In Jesus' name, praise. seven days a week you're going to be praising and worshiping God all the days of your life you might as well practice while you're here on earth right amen yeah oh come here John and Rachel they came all the way from Indiana to be here today or Illinois Southern Illinois or Indiana I can't remember so Southern Illinois or Indiana seven hours Come on, most people won't come across the street to go to church. Well. Give me both your hands there. We're going to pray a blessing on you, man. I feel breakthrough coming to you. I feel like turnarounds about ready to take place in your life. All the bad that you've been going through is about ready to become good. So, Father, we lift up Rachel and John. We thank you for their lives. We thank you, for Lord, for their commitment to you. And I declare and I decree a blessing on them. I pray your face shines upon them. I pray your glory surrounds them like a shield. I pray that every financial need that they have is met according to your word. I declare and decree that any, 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 anything in their life that is out of sorts is already taken care of. Help them to keep their praise on. Help them to keep their worship on. And help their prayer life to be amped up to a whole nother level. I lose a spirit of intercession on them. I lose a spirit of praise on them. I bind fear, worry, and anxiety. And I declare and I decree better days are ahead of them from this day forward. Keep them safe on the road. Keep their car running good. No accidents, no injuries, no animals running out in front of them, and no crazy drivers. We put an angel on their car right now, and we say they're going to get home safe. Be with them and their children today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, lead them and guide them. Whatever their life is, wherever they're called to next, whatever you want them to do next, we pray that you would lead them and guide them. May their steps be ordered of you today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Somebody shout amen. Love you guys.